Hey, everybody. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Millia. And I'm super excited today because I've got a mortgage superstar on here. And he's going to talk about how he become, he's become one of the youngest leaders, managers to get into the banking industry and really take it over. So we're going to go dive deeper into that. I'm going to share with you how he did that. But first, a word from our introduction and sponsors. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia. I'm your host, Matt Milia. And in this podcast, we'll talk about the real, raw, uncut business success secrets you won't find anywhere else. Follow my journey from entry level to CEO. We discuss real actionable items you can plug into your business right away. To subscribe to our weekly top tips, you can go to www.mattpodcast.com and join our community of elite high-level performers. And if you're interested in our inside sales company, you can go to www.appointmentstoday.com to jump on a free strategy call. And now, stay tuned for our podcast. All right, all right. What's happening, Justin? How are you? Hey, Matt. I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on. Uh, how are you, man? I am great. I am great. I always love to be able to. Uh, I always love to be able to talk with like-minded individuals who are uh, looking to grow and build their business. So I'm super excited. Thank you for coming on. And uh, yeah, yeah, no, for everyone no doubt. Doesn't... I think that's why we've always uh, got along, Matt, no doubt about it. Uh, I think <laughs> the first time we met, I, we saw kind of the same kind of hustle drive and uh, motivation, which uh, has been really cool. And it's good to finally be on the, the podcast and with the appointments today. And I'm really excited to talk, kind of collaborate and um, discuss some stuff that I love to speak about. Awesome. Well, so for everyone who doesn't know you, tell everybody just kind of a little bit about yourself and uh, and yeah, how you got into the lending side of things. Sure. Well, I uh, my name is Justin Ominski. I'm the branch manager or area manager for Paramount Bank. Uh, I had two offices, one in Independence, Ohio, and one in Kansas City or Overland Park, um, Kansas. Um, I got into the industry in July of 2012, which is crazy to think about. It's uh, been over eight years, but uh, it has been my first adult job. Uh, so I'm very lucky and blessed to have found a career path that has been uh, very rewarding and fruitful for me. Um, I started in this industry as a junior banker, uh, knowing nothing. I couldn't even, I didn't know there was a T in mortgage, um, but uh, to kind of work my way through the ranks and um, really grow not only as a person in that time frame, but in uh, business as well. It's, it's been something that I take very seriously. So uh, that's a little bit about me. And I'm again, excited to, to kind of talk more about what has allowed me to grow within this industry at such a young age and kind of putting pen to paper and taking action rather than just talking and um, really excited to kind of communicate some of the stuff that I think has, has brought me some success. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to, to really dive into that with you. And so something that, you know, of course, a lot of people now, there's so much competition out in the marketplace. There's so many different lenders and people you can go to. What are some things that you've done and Paramount has done that really that you feel like to stay kind of a, ahead of the curve and you know tell everyone a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So you're 100% right. The market is super competitive and there are a lot of different options out there for home buyers or homeowners who currently have a mortgage. And, um, you know, so I identified that in my prospective employer, I wanted to work for a company who, you know, put themselves in a different place above the pack. And really, in my opinion, there's one really easy way to do so. And uh, it's to have the best product. And the best part about a mortgage is one plus one equals two. It is a numbers game. So uh, having the lowest rate and cost combination on the market or a very competitive one that gives you the service that you know takes a purchase to close less than 20 days or refinance in a market where you know all companies are, are taking 45 to 60 days, staying ahead of the curve, making the correct like hiring processes to make sure that our company is still giving our clients that same term time. Um, it's it's not one specific thing, but just working for a company who has a vision, understands they have to move with this market, the market and the real estate market, the mortgage industry, it moves at a very, very fast pace. And Paramount Bank and their leadership team does a really great job of one, giving a superior product in terms of price and interest rate, because who doesn't want the best deal, but also kind of leading the pack and understanding, okay, well, it's a refinance market right now because rates are so low. So we're going to not only gear our our, our uh, lead buy and our kind of clients towards refinance, but we're going to make sure we staff up. 
but we're not going to neglect our purchases as well. We're going to still lead our industry turn times with less than 30 day closings. And um, it's, it's just as important, both of those aspects. So true. And I remember, so with you guys now, do you take like, is it a paper? Is it a mix of both? Does that even exist anymore? Because when I did, when I did mortgages, I mean, we were doing stated income, stated asset, no income, no, I mean, that was like the wild, wild west. Mm. Uh, but I mean, yeah, does that, any of that even, are, are there things that exist that are even like that anymore for people that uh, have a little bit lower in the credit score? Or what do you guys normally do for them? Well, so that's a great question. It is definitely, there are unique products out there. Uh, in our industry, we call them non-QM or portfolio products that won't be your traditional like FHA, conventional, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac guidelines. Um, there have been a lot of changes in the mortgage in industry over the last 10 to 15 years, a lot more regulations, which is a good thing for everybody. We don't want another housing market crash in 2008. But um, for you know less than perfect credit situations, there are a lot of great uh, products out there that some lenders or bankers don't even know or communicate with because you know they're used to doing just this cookie cutter. If it's not conventional or FHA, we don't want to do it or even know how to do it type of deal. So again, right. one of the cool products that uh, or one of the cool things that Paramount Bank does in this industry is we have a portfolio team or a product, a list of investors that will work with self-employed borrowers who may not show Uncle Sam all of the money, but uh, they are still great quality borrowers. They get the deposits into the business account. And you know if they're allowed to, to write off their taxes, but can't get a qualify for a traditional mortgage, we can help make that income work. If you know we can prove an extenuating circumstance um, impacted one FICO score, but they've paid their bills on time, you know, most of the time up until this one extenuating circumstance, we could find a home for that borrower. And of course, if for whatever reason a borrower isn't qualified, I specialize in making sure that those those specific people, family, individual know, hey, it's it is the matter of working hard, putting a focus, and fixing some of the things that you fell short at prior prior to we can fix all of that and I can't tell you. And one of the most rewarding parts about being in this industry is helping maybe the less than perfect credit borrower um, finally get into their first or dream home that they never thought possible, but within three, six short months, um, you know, they were able to do it. And, and, and it's a great rewarding feeling. Love it, love it. So now you guys do more than, you are just you do, you service more than just Ohio, right? You also do other areas or what? We are licensed in all 50 states, not 49. We are licensed oh. in all 50 states. Yes, that is a, it's a great, not beautiful four, thing. Not 49. It was funny yeah. that you said that because there's yeah. always usually that one random yeah. Alaska or Hawaii or somewhere else. That and those are usually there. the ones. Yeah, Alaska, Hawaii. Yes, no, we are licensed in all 50 states. Yes, sir. That's awesome. So as as far as, I talked, we talked a little bit about prior to jumping on core values and, you know, now I think more than ever with, and, and if you don't mind me saying you're a younger guy, I mean, you, yeah. you know, you're early twenties, mid twenties. I mean, you've got into the business really young and you've grown from, I mean, you know, just hitting the phones, to getting all the way up into a, a, a management level position. What are some things that you've had to learn about yourself and things you've had to become to, you know, to get to that next level. Yes. Well, I'm glad you asked because it is, you're always learning about yourself and you have to, one of the first things that you have to do is always kind of understand where you're at, what does make you successful. And, uh, looking back on my tenure and it's been a short tenure for all of those who are listening, maybe wondering, I did just turn 27 in June. Right. And I've been in this industry for now eight years. So since I was 19 years old, um, and when I started at 19 to now here I am at 27, uh, you have to have core values and you have to stay true to those values and you have to understand and you can't just say that those are the values that you live by, but you actually have to follow through with them and make sure that people understand and respect that, okay, this is actually, he says and does what he's, you know, says and, and does. It's a simple concept. And a lot of people can talk out of both sides of their mouth. Uh, and I realized that uh, at, at a very young age. And so um, when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. And if I can't do it, I don't say that I will. Uh, and I think that that's a very, um, I, that's a thing or a quality that a lot of people respect. And being a young leader, you have to gain the respect and you do that and you earn that by doing things the right way. So I always pride myself in doing things the right way. We are, this is a career, a lot of people want to, and I'm an emotional guy, right? So uh, if you can't always be emotional in a professional environment, right? So you still always have to think about not what's best for you, but what's best for the company, what's best for my people, 
what's best for the 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 bankers or the agents that you're leading um is this going to am i going to step over them to get you know my piece of the puzzle or you know can we all share and, and bask in it and glory together and so it's important that you always you don't you're not looking out for just yourself in a leadership role a young old it does not matter experience or inexperience if people respect you because you do things the right way and you do them at a high level it, it it is obvious if it's not obvious then you you can't make yourself the obvious choice and perhaps you're not ready or you shouldn't be in that position man that, that's powerful and you're you're absolutely right leading by example doing what you say you're going to do so many people talk the talk but they don't walk the walk and you know as far as for you being, you know, at, at such a young age, getting into the business, I mean, there's always those external forces that are, you know, hey, you know, come out and party, come out and, you know, live this, try to live this rock star lifestyle. Yet a lot of them are living for the weekend and they're not working on building and growing their business, especially now. I think Correct. it's so important to really work and build you know, master your craft, get better at it, invest in yourself. Uh, what are some things that for people that are, you know, young entrepreneurs looking to maybe get into, whether it's mortgage, whether it's real estate, I mean, any business, uh, what, what is, what's some advice that you'd give to them, especially since you started so young? Um, yeah. So you said a lot of good and smart things. One thing that I think definitely sticks out is you have to sometimes eliminate distractions, right? There will always be your friends and, you know, the outside influences saying, hey, you know, you can come out on the Thursday night and, you know, let's go and, and drink on Thirsty Thursdays or, you know, the cute girl just, you know, slid up into your Facebook DMs and, you know, it might be 12 o'clock at night. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to be realistic. It is sometimes you have to give away through, through those distractions. Um, but if you do so and you understand and you stay grounded and, you know, disciplined, it's, it's a very, very important. The easy thing for me is like I told you, it's a numbers game and this industry is very rewarding. So I know that in order for me to be at my absolute best, I have to give myself maximum efficiency and I can't give myself maximum efficiency if I'm coming into work hungover the next day. And so you only have so many opportunities. I've always been the person that I want to maximize my opportunities and you do so by being on your game hundred percent of the time. Now you can have fun, right? But it's actually you know, blocking off the time to have fun. I know, listen, you and I, I, I know, I see your Facebook videos and posts and your Snapchats. I mean, you have fun just as much as anybody, but you are on the phones, you are doing your, your, your day-to-day -day activities. You show up to work every single day, you come in early and you leave late. And, uh, you know, those are great qualities to have, especially being a young guy. If I can give any advice to young people, uh, one thing that I'm very blessed with is knowing that, Hey, I have, this a uh, unique time and opportunity in my life being young to where I can put in this time and this energy and efficiency where it will pay off. I'm going to work hard now and I'm going to play later. And that's really what I think and see. And I know so many smart people that I respect have told me to do so. And uh, I've, I think I've taken that advice to heart. And so I know that, yes, I'm, I'm maybe uh, making some sacrifices. I might not be having as much fun as, as my peers, but when I'm, you know, 40, 50 in my retirement ages. And I have three houses and I have my 401k to retire on. And I, you know, I'm living on, you know, the beach, all these visions that I will manifest these, these, uh, these distractions that I'm not going to give into and these, you know, sacrifices that I'm going to make, I will ensure pay off in that long run. That's awesome. And you brought up something in the end there, you said the visions that you manifest now, one thing that I've always learned is hope is not a strategy. So a lot of times people will hope that their business takes off or hope their relationship gets better or hope their physical fitness, they get to the next level in their life, but you got to put in the work. And that's one thing that I'm really glad you brought up. And I mean, before you were saying it's funny because, you know, someone slides into the, to the direct message and, you know, is trying to coordinate something with you during a work day. They know, like you've set that, you've set the expectations, yep. you've set that communication with your friends. And I think it's really tough when you're, I mean, when you're really like at 19, that had to be tough because most, <laughs> most of your it friends was. are like, yeah, most of your friends are off to college or they're, 
you know, they're do they're in a job that is like dead end. There's no career. There's no, it's not a long-term uh, strategy. They're just there to collect a check. So, I mean, that had to be tough just really having that discipline to, you know, let people know, Hey, during these days of the week, I'm focused on work and that's it. Yes, it is most definitely tough. And it's gotten easier for sure. As I've gotten a little older now, I'm a little used to it. And then my people, my circle, my friends, they know, they understand, okay, Monday through Friday, Justin is, is serious. He's playing no games. And um, you said it very smartly, you know, you set the realistic expectations as long as everybody knows, then they can't be upset. And so, um, you know, it is, you know, making sure you're disciplined to the grind because in order for this to work the way that it is supposed to, it is a grind. There's a reason why that term is so popular in sales in this industry, whether it be real estate or mortgages, they're the same thing. You have to be true to the grind. And if you put in the time, then, uh, you know, we are very fortunate and it's very rewarding. It is great to be able to help people purchase their first home or save $500 a month by lowering their interest rate 2% helping them raise their credit score so they can, you know, get their family into a starter home. Like there's just so many great rewarding things that we get to, to be a part of and experience. So making those sacrifices and not giving into those temptations sometimes can be easy. So long as you, again, you know, understand what's at work here. Yeah, it's so true. And I mean, having, I think having a good ecosystem, having people that you can fall back on, having people that have your back, and something that I've always aspired to, and I've found very true, the you meet the top five friends that someone has, and that generally will define how they are perceived, how they are, and what, and really what they value. And you know that's tough for some people to hear because they look at their circle and they're like, man, I got a lot of people who are underachieving. Yes, and and. When I say underachieving, I'm not talking about financial because that's important to some people, but I'm talking about just a quality of life, being able to do more than just provide and being able to do more than just survive, to be able to actually thrive and live a life that's worth living. Uh, and to me, I mean, that's so, it's so important to have the right people in, in your circle around you. Uh, at 19, that, that had to be pretty tough. <laughs> yes. Well, I definitely had to make some changes to my circle. Absolutely. And one thing I want to say two things. One is, and you're right on the money with a lot of things that you say. And the one thing that has absolutely 100% uh, attributed to a lot of my success is I do my absolute hardest to maintain a positive mindset, no matter how difficult or how frustrated, um, how emotionally involved I am in a particular transaction or with a particular person that I'm managing or an agent or whatever the case may be. Um, I try to remain as positive towards, you know, the situation as I can. And it helps so great. Uh, I can't even put it into words. So if I can give any bit of advice out there and it is hard, it's easier said than done for sure. But, um, you know, positivity is an attractive quality to no matter what the situation is. And, um, you know, in a professional setting, uh, especially, and it is, uh, particularly attractive when it is hard to be positive and people pick up on that. And, um, it is a great way to solve problems, um, in an efficient manner. So that is, that is very important. Um, number two is again, to go back to the circle, you have to make sure that they align with what your goals are, because there's nothing worse than being dragged down from, you know, obtaining success, right? You want to be with people who are going to help push, motivate, hold you accountable. And I have been very blessed and lucky. I would not be here talking with you today if I didn't have great mentors in my life and uh, that helped me in this business, uh, whether it's a, a life mentor or a business mentor, uh, find one. If you don't have one, Please reach out to me. Ask Matt if you're on his network, if you're in my network and you're just interested or you you're, you see my videos or my posts, Matt's videos or your posts, please reach out to me. No doubt about it. I would love just to speak with you, talk shop, maybe help motivate you or, or talk about some of the things that I've experienced. But having a mentor that's gone through it that can help rise is so extremely vital and integral to anybody's success. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head and it's especially now, I mean, with all the things that are going on. And I mean, you know, you can go down the rabbit hole, looking at political things, looking at uh, the epidemic, all the stuff that's going on. And then you end up finding yourself in this really, it's, it's a cyclical process where something I've always told my guys and the people that I coach, whatever you're focusing on, it expands. 
So if you're focusing on the bad, it's going to expand. If you're focusing on the negative, it's going to expand. If you're focusing on positive, it's going to expand and you're going to attract and magnetically bring the people into your life that are that are so powerful. And, and the law of attraction, it's funny because I've read so many books and things on it. I've always looked at it like, ah, that's so hokey. But it is so true because if you... Because if you're not putting, if you're not putting the best vibes and frequency out into the world and you're, you're just going to attract the wrong type of people, do you feel that as well? That, you know, when you're million yeah. percent, yes, absolutely. The law of attraction is something that I've actually studied a lot on, right? Because just having that positive mindset. And, um, I think it is again, integral to, to, to any bit of success we want outside of work or inside of work. Uh, yep. but yes. And yeah, energy is reciprocal, no doubt about it. So you get what you put in and, uh, that's why, and that's the, that is the premise. That is the whole point of handling things with a positive mindset, because it is going to allow the solutions and the resolutions to become clear. And you're going to actually get the answers and not this, you know, hokey pokey response. So absolutely, uh, thoughts are energy and you want to make sure that energy is positive. Yeah. It's, I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Well, for everyone that's watching, if you are looking for a mortgage, you're looking for, or you're looking for someone to help you level up and help you in your business or growth, you can of course reach out to myself, but also reach out to Justin. Uh, and his website, if you see at the bottom, is paramountbank.com. Uh, Justin, I don't know how, I always, I always get real kind of leery of what I can ask when it comes to mortgages, because I know it's a bank. I know there's only certain things that you can talk about or you can't say. Uh, yeah. I know I've seen rates, and I know you can't really talk too much on the rates, but I've seen rates go into the low threes. I've seen them in the high twos. Is this the lowest you've seen it in a long – I mean, I, this is the lowest I can recall seeing them for – I can't even tell you how long. Yes, this is absolutely, without a doubt, 100%, the lowest interest rate market in the mortgage history period. And uh, I, can, I can't talk much about rates without talking about loan amount NMLS numbers, but I can say that I did lock a loan with no points on a good situation, but with no points today at 2.25%. That did not cost the borrower one penny in terms of a discount charge. And uh, I was able to lock a borrowing at 2.25% on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. So um, it is absolutely bonkers right now. It is something that, uh, you know, right because of the pandemic and the, the issues we had with closing and reopening the, the economy. Um, you know, there's a lot of reasons for that rate, but right now it is a good time to capitalize on it for the homeowners um, who may be in a mortgage or the prospective homeowners who were looking to purchase their first home, right? Because truly, and this is not uh, hyperbole, this is this is a truth, there has never been a better time to, to get into a mortgage because there's never been a cheaper way to purchase a home. So, when I was in mortgage, I mean, what's from 04 to 08. And I remember I was working at Quicken Loans at the time. And one of the things that we used to say is 599, you your mind, meaning like 5.99% interest. Are you crazy? You should, you know, refinance. Now 5.99, I mean, that's, it's really high it's, rate. Yeah, that's criminal. <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's totally, it, it's so remarkable how much has changed in such a short amount of time and it sounds like you guys do a little bit more than just a paper uh you're also working with people that uh, maybe aren't in the most perfect scenario but you're able to put something together uh, i mean i went through an a paper bank when we got our loan and i mean it's i, I won't say I won't say that it was good. I won't say that it was bad. I will say it was incredibly stressful. But yes. something, something that I noticed, and I was, you know, again, every time I interview anybody, even if it's like someone I know really, really well, I'm going to go back and say, you know what? Let me, let me look at this guy's reviews. Let me see what people are saying. I could not find one review that was bad. And even the people that were like, oh, you know, he stuck through it, through thin and thin, helped me, you know, walk, walk me through all the ins and outs of the process. What, what are your, what are your thought processes for, I mean, when you have a difficult situation like that and you're working with someone that's difficult, how do you still get them to have great reviews? And I mean, yeah, what yeah. do you have to do to do that? Yeah, well, that's a great, great question. And the reason I think that the number one reason is because I acknowledge that, hey, I understand your stress point. I get it. It's a legitimate concern or it's a legitimate frustration. If I drop the ball, I will take accountability. And like I said, I think earlier in this conversation, people respect that. 
we can recognize when our sometimes there's a lot of hands in the cookie jar with this industry. You have an appraisal, you have a title company, you have your processor, your underwriter, you have the real estate agent. You know, there's a there's there's multiple moving pieces, and sometimes they don't always gel together. And when they do, it's a beautiful thing, and you get all the credit, and it's the best thing in the world. And you can see a million reviews about myself, the company, and of course, I strive for those those reviews. But sometimes things aren't perfect, and the world we live in is not a perfect world. And if we pretend that it is, and we ignore those problems, or we you you know, try to push them away, or we don't overcome those objections, then we're just only putting a Band-Aid on, on something. And so I prefer to, to actually, you know, acknowledge, okay, hey, listen, this is where it's at. I appreciate your trust in me. This is why it happened. Regardless of if you agree or disagree with it, I will always stick by my sword and let you know, like, this is where it, it happens. And it's just a, it's a, quality that people respect and appreciate. And so you just have to align expectations. If you fell short, you admit and take accountability and, you know, people will still stick with you, believe it or not, and still have trust. And okay, this is why, as, as a matter of fact, it may confirm the reason why they did decide to do business with you or, or your company. I love it. Where, where do you find if there are challenges, is it usually because of credit? Is it job history? Again, I know we're going deep into the banking side of things, so sure. be careful. But no, it's where okay. Do you, where do you normally find challenges in you know in in the business? Yeah, so um, thankfully, because I've been doing this for so long, we have some different processes and programs that I go through, and I have in my little checklist that I make sure to eliminate the red flags and overcome any obj objections. When I'm reviewing a file, I look at every way to deny it before I approve it. When there's no ways to deny it, I know it's good to go. Um, now, however, uh, sometimes a borrower believes their home's worth a little more than it is, or the appraisal no. comes in low. Yeah, I know that <laughs> sounds crazy. Um, <laughs> you know, right now, one of the biggest uh, hurdles that we have to overcome is uh, borrowers are losing their employment because of COVID. And so, you know, yep. there's just a lot of things that, you know, go into, and that's, that's heartbreaking, right? Because they were going to save yeah. so much money on their mortgage by lowering into a lower rate and they had this job, but now they don't have the job, nor could they save the money. So it's definitely not fun conversations to have. Um, but, uh, you know, most of the time, or in most cases, and I'm knocking on wood and I'm not being braggadocious. Uh, if you're, if, if I am able to, uh, review a file, review a, a complete application, review the borrower's income documents and credit, uh, they will know up front whether this loan is going to go through or if for whatever reason we're going to have issues. Again, it is making sure we, we align our expectations uh, correctly. But So say, having been ahead. in it long enough, oh, having been in it long enough, you have that, that expertise where you could look at it and say, you know, hey, th there's going to be red flags here, here, and here, almost like you're pre-underwriting it. Uh, before it even gets to the underwriter, because stipulations and conditions. Oh, yes, man, holy exactly. Hell, stressful. <laughs> yes, it is stressful. Exactly. And and selfishly, I don't want to deal with the stress. I want them to be right. clean. I want to help. I want to get everything up front. I want to make my underwriter's decision very easy. I, and if I do see a red flag, I want to get a hold of it. I want to give them a compensating factors. Okay, I see this, but here's that. Okay, I see that, but here's this. And uh, when you structure the file, again, when you know what you're looking for and, um, you know, you're not just looking for the cookie cutter, you have the experience to, to kind of navigate when quite files get tough. One of the reasons that I'm so successful, Matt, is because I'll take the tough deals. I'll take them because I know how to work them correctly. Some people they gave up. A lot of times people will call me and say, hey, Justin, you probably can't even help me because X lender denied me. And, and, and that is that has that line has made me so much money because I then work extra hard to make sure that that person, if the, and if they can't, hey, you can't get approved, but um, I'm going to work very hard to look at every angle, look at every guideline, make sure that any condition that the underwriter can stipulate you for is addressed up front so we don't have to do it in the back end. And, and that's, that is what having the experience and being in it for, since you were 19, does for you. So yes. that's that's awesome. Well, for everybody that's watching, uh, you can go to Justin's site. It's ParamountBank.com. It's not his site. It's his bank site. i make sure I'm clear on that. Uh, but of course, Paramount Bank, uh, great place. I literally read up on everything that you guys do. I'm very excited to find out more. And uh, I mean, at 2.25%, I mean, I thought my three, I think I have like three and an eighth, and I thought I was doing good. So I mean, so that, you that's were amazing. doing good at one time. Yes, you right, were doing right. good. That's awesome. 
Well, Justin, thank you so much for coming on. Did you want to uh, add anything else before we jump off? Anything else that you want to close out with? Um, really, I just want to say thanks for having me on, Matt. It's been a complete pleasure. I'm glad that we actually got to, to speak and, and uh, talk shop. It has been great getting to know you, grow with you, see kind of how you have done well in your two or three years that we've, we've uh, been in communication. And for anybody out there listening, I appreciate your time today. Truly, I want to help you grow. Any young people, old people, anywhere in between, if you have any questions or concerns, no pressure reach out to me. You can reach me on Facebook by searching my name there at the bottom left, I believe. I hope it is left for you guys as well. But um, uh, I, I appreciate the, the time today and uh, look forward to, to, to kind of work with you some more, Matt. And um, if there's any questions that I can answer, then you guys know how to get a hold of me. Awesome. Well, again, Justin, thank you for everyone watching. We'll see you same channel, same time next place. Same place next time next week. See you, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. See you, Thanks, see you guys. Matt. Thanks.